There is no story that you cannot change, that you cannot do, that you cannot do, that you cannot change. There is nothing you cannot do. There is no story you cannot change. There is no life that you cannot touch, that you cannot do, that you cannot do, that you cannot do. There is nothing you cannot do. There is no story you cannot change, that you cannot do, that you cannot do. That is you cannot do. Lord, we worship you because there is nothing you cannot do. There is no story that you cannot change and that there is no life that you cannot touch. There is nothing you cannot do. There is no life you cannot change. There is no story you cannot change, you cannot do. Nothing is impossible before you, Lord. Nothing is impossible with you, Lord, that you cannot do. That you cannot do. There is nothing you cannot do. In the book of Revelation chapter 19, verse 6, that is a revelation of God's name that I want you to, to know just before I pray with you. I welcome everyone that is joining this 30 minutes broadcast. We want to pray the prayer of Jabez. But just before we go to the five prayers that Jabez prayed, that is a dimension of God that I want to introduce to you today. And that dimension is known as the omnipotent God. Revelation chapter 19, verse 6. And I heard, as it were, the voice of great multitude, and at the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, Hallelujah, for the Lord God omnipotent reign. That place introduced God as the omnipotent God. What is the meaning of omnipotent God? The word omnipotent means the one who can do all things. This is the first prophetic utterance this afternoon. The Lord is in the doing business today and he will do all that matter to you. The Lord will do all that matter to you today. I want you to pray wherever you are. There are five major prayers that Jabez prayed. And that prayer could be found in the book of First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9 and 10. But who was Jabez before God changed his story? The Bible described him as an honorable man. But when this guy looked at his life, First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9, he said, and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, because I bear him with sorrow. You know, his destiny was manipulated by his mother. His destiny was manipulated by his own biological mother. But that was not his destiny. The Bible in the first line, describe the kind of person, the kind of glory, the kind of destiny that Jabez had. He said he was more honorable than all his brethren. But as a result of circumstances surrounding his bed, the mother said, you are not going to be what your destiny is. I, I have a hodge in my spirit. There is a power that is also telling you that you are not going to become what God has called you. 
and I pray and I prophesy, there was a contention against the destiny of Jabez. The Almighty God is creator, called him an honorable man. But his mother, based on the circumstances surrounding his bed, called him son of sorrow. They are two different things. God sees him as an honorable man, a glorious man, a well-to-do man. But his mother said, you are not going to be that. Because of the circumstances surrounding his bed, he said, you are going to be son of sorrow. And because of what his mother said, the word of his mother override his destiny. So he began his life. He began to live a life of sorrow. Everything around him does not generate good news. He became a son of sorrow because of that negative tag. Can I pray for you? Some people, their parents have tagged them as son of sorrow. Their parents have caused them, whether deliberately or indeliberately or knowingly. The destiny of Jabez was glorious. The Bible says he was more honorable. He was supposed to be the best among his brethren. He was supposed to be the star among his brethren. He was supposed to be the breadwinner in his family. Maybe you are also listening to me. Everything around you, what you are seeing in your dream, the prophecy you have received, the future you are seeing, is contrary to what you are experiencing. It is the same prayer of Jabez that you need to pray. He was supposed to be honorable, but his mother spoke negative words to his destiny. He said, you are a son of sorrow. So he began schooling. He couldn't finish school. He learned trade. He couldn't finish that. His life was at base. Nothing works for him because of the negative tag. Can I pray for you? I felt we should pray together. The first prayer point I want you to pray. Even Jabez did not pray this prayer, but that was the starting point. Every negative tag that doesn't allow me to manifest my glory, God erased them. I, need, I know you can pray, even if you are in your office, maybe you are in inside bus or public place as you are listening to me. I need you to pray with your heart. Say this, make this confession, or you can type it. Every negative tag, every negative labeling that has turned my destiny upside down, Lord, erase them by your blood. Every negative tag, if you are watching, you can type, and I'm going to be prophesying to you. Every negative tag that have turned your destiny upside down, the destiny of Jabez was turned upside down. He was supposed to be honorable, but you look at his life. I am not what God called me. I am what my parents called me. Maybe you also look at your life. You say, I am not what God called me. It seems I am what my enemy called me. I pray for you. Every negative tag from the enemy, every evil tag and labeling that is working against your destiny, you are now living in opposite of what you are supposed to be. God called you success, but you are failing. God said you will be the head, but you look at your leader, you look at your family, you seem to be at the bottom. You need to pray the prayer of Jabez. And I pray and I prophesy, everyone that is living contrary to the destiny God ordained for them, you are getting out from that bondage. You will become what God said you are. God called him honorable. But every experience Jabez had was dishonorable. He was a non-entity. He was nobody in the family. He was nobody in the society. So he said, I need to pray. Look at your own situation. I want you to be hungry with your own situation. Until you are hungry with your situation, God cannot change your situation. I see some people are watching. I want you to type that. Until you are very angry with your situation, God cannot change your situation. So I want you to be angry and pray these five prayers. There are five prayer points that Jabez prayed. And let me lead you to those five prayers. First Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9 and 10. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bear him with sorrow. 
I'm hearing in my spirit. Sorrow follow Jabez from base. And there's somebody listening to me. Sorrow is following you from base. From today, you are disconnected from that sorrow. It was sorrow that followed Jabez from base up to her God's life. And Karima Lia Sekelia Dadara. Somebody is also listening to me. Every of your experience is sorrowful. There is no other adjective to qualify all your existence. You have lived a life of sorrow. God is asking me to tell you to pray. Lord, I don't want to have anything to do with sorrow again. I need you to make that pronouncement. I need you to type that. God, I don't want to have anything to do with sorrow again in my life. This guy journey all his life with sorrow because his mother called him son of sorrow. He got to a point, he couldn't bear it again. He couldn't take it again. And he said, God, you are a story changer. You need to change my story. And he prayed some five powerful prayers. The first one, verse 10. And Jabez called on the God of Israel. God of Israel. The God that can change story. The God that can change situation. And that is what I want you to do. He prayed. The Bible says he prayed to God of Israel. He called on God of Israel saying, Oh, that thou would bless me indeed. That was the first prayer. He said, I look at this situation. You called me honorable, but I am not blessed. It seems I live in the opposite of who I am. And the first prayer that I pray, he said, let me be what you called me. He said, that you will bless me indeed. Is there anyone listening to me? Is there anyone listening to me? And all you are saying is, God, bless me indeed. Do you know the meaning of that prayer? Jabez was saying, God, I want to become what you called me. I want to be what you described me. I want to live in fulfillment of my destiny. Verse 9, he said he was honorable. But he looked at his life. He, he couldn't trace any honor to his life. So he said, let that honor manifest in my life. And he take God's blessing for you to become honorable. I'm going to say that again. He take the blessing of God for you to become honorable. Let us pray together. The first prayer he prayed said that you will bless me indeed. Indeed, the word indeed is, means that let me be blessed indeed. Can you just say that to yourself? Lord, bless me indeed. Yes, sir, you are saying that, Mr. Ope Juadebayo. That is what I want everybody watching now and those that will watch on my YouTube channel to pray. God, bless me indeed. This guy is talking about generational blessing, not just the blessing that is going to be enough for me. If all you do is to feed yourself and feed your family, you are not blessed. A truly blessed man is a channel of blessing to hundreds of people, to thousands of people. Our senior pastor used to say one thing. He said, if all you do is to pay the school fees of your children and you don't have any other children that's not your own, that you are paying their school fees, he said you are not truly really blessed. If all you do is to put food on the table of your wife and husband, he said you are not really blessed. If you don't have sons or strangers that you are paying their school fees, he said you are not truly really blessed. That is what this guy is saying. He said, I want the kind of blessing that will be more than enough. That I will not just be blessed, but I will also become a blessing. He said, that you will bless me indeed. He said, you are honorable. But you are not blessed. He knew that the solution to his poverty was God's blessing. The solution to poverty is God's blessing. I want you to pray. And as I prophesy, say, God, bless me indeed. About, about 15 days ago, I saw in a revelation. I saw in a revelation. I met down on, on the mountain and I was praying. And my prayer was very simple. The prayer I was praying that revelation is God bless me and make me a blessing. About 15 days ago, I saw that I was praying that prayer in my revelation. In the dream, said, God 
bless me and make me a blessing. Bless me and make me a blessing. And when I woke up, I said, oh, this is the kind of prayer God wants me to pray. And I prayed that prayer for about one hour. And guess what? The kind of alert that I've never received in my life, I got it within 24 hours after I prayed that prayer. That was the prayer that Jabez prayed. He said that thou will bless me indeed. Indeed me that everyone that sees me will know that this is God blessing you. That old man cannot do this. I see some people have not prayed that prayer. I need you to pray wherever you are. God, that thou will bless me indeed and make me a blessing. God, everyone listening to me, I need you, Lord, to bless them and bless them indeed. The blessing indeed is the one that is greater than what you need. If all you have is what you need, you are not really blessed. Until you become blessing to people, that is when you are truly blessed. And that is the first prayer he prayed and the most powerful one he did. He said that you will bless me. Do you know the meaning of that blessing? He said, take away the shame that people have known with me. I don't know your own shame. I don't know your own. I don't know the kind of clothes that Jabez was wearing was a dishonorable clothes. His life was nothing to write home about and he was tired of that situation and he, he called on God of Israel. I'm calling on God of Israel for your sake that God will bless you indeed. I say God Almighty for anyone that can type and say amen wherever you are. I say God will bless you indeed. There was another example of a man that God truly blessed in the Bible. And that man was Obedi-Odem. The heart was killing people, and David thought, let's take it to the house of Obediode. If this man die, I don't, I don't have problem. And within three months, because it was the heart of covenant, God showed up in the house of Obediode and blessed him indeed. The blessing indeed is always noticeable by order. When God bless you indeed, that blessing is always noticeable by order. That blessing cannot be hidden. That blessing, that testimony, you don't need to share it. It's a self-pronouncing testimony. It's, it will be there for everyone to see. I pray God will bless you indeed. Make it a, a prayer point today and pray God. Say, God, bless me indeed. Bless me and make me a blessing. Have you, have you not read that God bless Abraham? And in his house, this guy, Abraham, was feeding 318 people every blessed day. Come to think of it. When you read your Bible, there is a phrase. They call it sailor. When you read Psalm, you will see a word, sailor. It means wait. Turn down on this. Meditate on this. Anytime you see the story of Abraham, they said 318 people. Is living in his house, was living in his house. It means every day, the minimum to feed 318 will be minimum of two cows. Because when you kill a big cow, you can get about 400 pieces from it. So the minimum cow they keep in Abraham's house is two cows every day for him to feed 318 servants. That is what it means to be blessed indeed. From today onward, the blessing that will be more than enough for your own. That the blessing that will make you a blessing for others. Receive that blessing in the name of Jesus. The blessing that will make you a blessing to others. You are not truly blessed unless other people say, call you blessed. Unless you become channel of blessing to others. So he said, bless that thou will bless me indeed. The second prayer that I pray. Verse 10, say, and Jabez called on God of his face, saying, Oh, that thou will bless me indeed. Number one. Number two, and enlarge my coast. And enlarge my coast. Maybe at 43, Jabez looked at his life in one room apart, rented apartment. He looked at his life with one pair of shoes, two, maybe two pair of dresses and he said something is not right he said 
It seems I'm not living my life. Maybe you also look at your life and say, it seems I'm not living my life. How can I, at 45, still be living in one self-contained room, rented apartment, and I cannot even pay? He look at his life. At 43, I don't have a man of my own. At 38, I do not have a, 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 a blissful marriage. Jabez look at his life. He said, there is something wrong about me. He said, there is this cause of smallness. Everything about him is small. Everything about him is small. The place where he lived was small. The income he was getting was small. Maybe you also look at your income. It's small. Is this is the what the, is Jabez syndrome? He look at everything around him is small, smallness, smallness. And he said, God, please enlarge my course. And the Bible says, God heard this prayer. Maybe that's your cry today. And you are saying, God, I need you to enlarge my course. Maybe you are being the same stage for life. Your children, your children, somebody is listening to me. You, you, you live your life for your children. You dedicate your income to, to sponsor your children's school. And you even borrowed money to finance their education, expecting that when they graduate, they will be paying back and be a blessing to you. But years after graduation, these children are not making it way in life. Is the Jabez syndrome. Instead of enlarging, everything around you is shrinking. Instead of you to enlarge, everything about you is a reduction, is shrinking. The Lord sent a word to you. The same evil that reduced the destiny of Jabez to nothing will no longer affect your destiny and those of your children. The mother of Jabez lived a sorrowful life over his son. And somebody is listening to me. You are living a life of sorrow over your children. That sorrow is coming to an end today. His mother looked at him. He said, you are a son of sorrow. Maybe you are also listening to me. It could be sickness that is making your children to become source of your sorrow. It could be the way they, 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 maybe they are not even following your own path, your own step as a Christian. You look at them. Everything around that child is bringing sorrow to you. I have a word to you from the Lord. That same child that has been giving you sorrow will begin to give you joy. The Lord will turn the situation of that boy around. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That prophecy is for somebody. So the first prayer he prayed, he said, God, that thou will bless me indeed. The second prayer he prayed, he said, Lord, enlarge my course. And what is the third prayer that Jabez prayed? Verse 10, he said, enlarge my course, and that your hand might be with me. This is one of the best prayer that I love, that the hand of the Creator will be upon me. You know, when the hand of God is upon you, blessing become your second name. Favor become your second name. Mercy will be operational in your life. He said, let your hand be upon me. This prayer is powerful. Do you know why? He realized that God is my maker. And God did not make anything that is evil. So he realized something went wrong in my journey. Something was wrong in my journey. So he said, God, you are the maker of all good things. And no evil came from you. He said, let your hand, the hand of the maker, be upon me for perfection. Can you that pray that prayer? Maybe you have a boy or a girl at home. You don't like the way that girl or that boy is behaving. The valid prayer is for the hand of the maker 
to be upon that child for restoration. And I pray and prophesy for everyone that you don't like what is going on in the life of your children. May the hand of the maker be upon that child. May the hand of the maker be upon that child. God wanted to speak to Jeremiah. So, and he asked him to go to the to, to the to a place where they made mud. Where in Jeremiah chapter 18. And when Jeremiah got there, he saw how the person that is making the mud was doing it. He would do it, he will collapse in the sand, he will adjust, and at the end of the day, from the mud, make a beautiful pot. And God said, I am the maker of all beautiful things. Maybe you look at your life, it seems as if you should scatter it. It seems as if you should end it. It seems as if this is not what I want. Why don't you pray the same prayer that, that Jabez prayed? He said, let your hand be upon me for restoration. For everyone that can say amen, the hand of the maker will be upon you for restoration. The hand of the maker will be upon your business for restoration. The hand of the maker will be upon your home, your husband for restoration. Maybe you look at your husband and say, this is not how this man started it. This is not the way we started it. You, you need the hand of the maker. Whatever that is not going right in your life, you need the hand of the maker. He said, let your hand be upon me. Do you know why? The hand of God cannot be upon you and that your life remain the same. Apparently, evidently, Jabez knew what he was praying for. He said, let the hand of restoration be upon me. And that was the third prayer. And the fourth prayer, he said, and doubt will keep me from evil. He said, just keep me away from evil. He looked at his life. He said, it seems evil is synonymous with me. Ah. He looked at his experiences as childhood. He looked at his experiences as youth. He looked at his financial life. He looked at his, his head. He looked at everything that is happening to him. He said, why am I living a life that is full of evil? And he said, God, he said, I don't want to see evil anymore. Ah, maybe you have also seen evil in your short life, in the life that you have lived. Why don't you pray the same prayer? He said, I don't want to see evil again. I don't want to see shame again. I don't want to see sickness again. I don't want to see evil again in my life. Take away my shame. I don't want to see them anymore. Mwe gong. Mwe gong. Mwa ba wan kuro la ye mi. Take away my shame. I don't want to see them anymore. Mwe gong. Mwe gong. Mwa ba wan kuro la ye mi. He looked at his life and said, I have known so much evil that nothing good is in my life. He said, God, I don't want to see evil anymore. Failure is evil. Backwardness is evil. Stagnation is evil. Late marriage is evil. Disorderliness is evil. Disappointment is evil. When you are living a life with, with no one ready to help you, rejection from people that ought to have helped you is evil. You are beautiful at 35. Nobody is approaching you. It's evil. At the time Jabez was praying this prayer, he had no child, he had no wife, he had no job, he had nothing. The only thing he had is evil. And he looked at it and said, God, I am fed up of this situation. Take away evil from my life. And for everyone listening to me, the Lord will take away all form of evil away from your life. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And the last one, the fifth prayer, he said that thou will keep me from evil, that it may not grieve me. Ah, he, he said that evil will not grieve me. Only kill me, kill my Only 
ki emi ki o ma ri ibinu je mo maybe you are also tired of evil maybe you are tired of your share maybe you are tired of your situation maybe you are tired of your position maybe you are tired of the experiences that life has bestowed on you that is not your destiny that is the evil that was pronounced on you remember in verse 9 they said jabez was more honorable than all his brethren but all his experiences proof for the wise so he pray five prayer and the last phrase verse 10 and god granted him that which he requested he said god granted him all that he requested what are the five prayers that jabez prayed as i round up the first prayer he said that thou will bless me indeed may you be blessed indeed in the name of jesus the second prayer he said enlarge my coast may god enlarge your coast in the name of jesus he said that your hand may be upon me may the mighty hand of restoration be upon you and the fourth one he said and that will keep me from evil he said i don't want to see evil again may god keep you away from evil and say and that will not grieve me he said i don't want to live a life of shame again that is the prayer of jabez and you know the good news he said, and God granted him that which he requested. May God answer all your prayers today. May God change your story. He's the way maker. He will make way for you. God is the one that changed the story of man. He will change your story. He will attend to your case. I'm hearing in my spirit. He said, God will attend to your case. Over that child, God will attend to your case. Over that difficult wife, God will. And, and that woman, you didn't marry her like that in the beginning. But in the middle of your marital journey, your wife suddenly become difficult. Your husband suddenly become difficult. Your children started misbehaving. He said, God will attend to that situation. He said, God granted his request. What, what is the meaning of that? It means God attended to his case. May God attend to your case. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That is the prayer of Jabez. Five prayer points for one situation. And at the end of the day, God changes his story. May God change your story today. The Lord bless you as you share. Thank you for listening.